PML is an independent research organisation that is conducting excellent marine research to understand human impacts and natural processes that go on within marine ecosystems. All of PML's research can be fundamentally considered to fall into three what I like to call communities of practice. First of all, we're looking to explore how marine systems fundamentally work and the processes that exist within them. Secondly, we're looking to explore how those systems are challenged by human activities and also other natural processes that might change the way in which they work. And finally, we look to develop solutions to the ways in which we can meet the challenges provided by things like climate change for a sustainable ocean future. Something that is quite unique to Plymouth Marine Laboratory is the fact that we have a huge diversity of technology in-house. Remote sensing, our ship, our facilities in the Smart Sound, as well as world-class marine laboratories. The Mesocosm facility is one of our most important laboratories at PML. It's a laboratory where we have 16 one meter cube tanks and we are able to control the environmental conditions very tightly. So this allows us to do very interesting experiments in the context of climate change. The PML Mesocosm, as you see it now, was largely built in the early 90s. In the early 90s, there was a large project uh, looking at the environmental impacts of, the, of a proposed new seven barrage. Funding was provided to explore the environmental effects that putting such a barrage on would have on marine communities and ecosystems around the Severn Estuary. In 2010, we received funding from the Natural Environment Research Council to undertake a long-term ocean acidification experiment. Up until that point, all of the ocean acidification experiments have been only conducted for a matter of weeks or months at the most. But our ambition was to run something for much longer in the end we managed to keep the experiment going for a year and a half and the power of that was it allowed us to look at those long-term changes that are often hidden in those short-term shock experiments. The typical things we will manipulate in there would be temperature, pH, oxygen, but also more recently the light seascape, so the light conditions in the water. Light pollution is a more recently recognized global pressure it's a widespread pressure, particularly for coastal organisms. The first light pollution experiments tended to have a constant light pressure on organisms. And we recognized through work done in-house that actually the tidal cycle is a very important modulator of that impact, particularly for seabed organisms, which we tend to study in the Mesocosm Laboratory. So in response to that new research, we adapted and in fact developed the first facility that is able to simulate that effect for these organisms. The ALICE project is a NERG highlight topic project on light pollution. It is called Artificial Light Impacts on Coastal Ecosystems and PML is tasked especially with assessing the impacts on the coastal food web. We know that these animals are sensitive to light but we don't know really what artificial light is doing to them. We have an entirely dark bit of the mesocosm, so we've turned all of the lights off and we've basically had to wrap our experimental system in uh, blackout material. Every different light intensity is entirely secure, so we don't get any light drifting through across treatments because that would ruin everything. We developed a bespoke tidal simulator. We worked with two companies in the design of that. And what that equipment does is it allows us to control very tightly our pumps, so the water circulation as well as the light conditions experienced by the organisms in tandem with the real life tidal cycle outside in Plymouth Sound. I am now running the last set of actual experiments on our animals, the behavioural stuff that we're actually interested in. And assuming that that all works fine and we get good data from it, we should be able to switch all the lights on um, and pack everything away. I came here to complete the experiment for the end of my master's program. In my university, I didn't have any facilities where I could have the simulations for the temperature conditions or such big tanks as I have here. The mesocosm here it has a lot of, of different aspects that come in handy. So for example, with the temperatures that can be controlled, they control it with regards to the station that's near the Plymouth Sound. We actually have tap seawater here, which helps a lot for 
time sensitive experiments, it makes a huge difference. The Music Rosen Laboratory is actually a multi-use space and it has different facilities in it and linked to them there are other laboratories in the lab where we process samples, organisms and so on. And so running the Music Rosen facility and its ancillary labs is actually a full-time job. We have about five to six permanent uh, staff members that do all the checks, all the controls in the laboratory, that maintain all our equipment um, and make sure that everything is, is running as it should. The Basil Lab is the Benthic Sound and Imaging Laboratory. It is a bespoke laboratory that we designed specifically to measure animal behaviour. Historically, animal behaviour would be measured in the same laboratory where we have our holding systems, so the main musicosm room, and we realised that actually sound and light and other stimuli affect the measures that we want to capture as part of our research. And so we designed this laboratory, which has um, a room, which is our uh, imaging room, where we uh, have computers and a number of equipment that we then uh, controls the equipment inside the actual observation suite, which is a soundproof room where we also have environmental controls on seawater conditions, temperature, pH, oxygen, and so on. A unique aspect of the PML Musicosm Lab is that we don't just look at rocky shore species, which we more frequently find in observatories around the world, but we actually have the ability to, to modify uh, the system to also look at soft sediment communities. So in that case, we would bring uh, live sediment cores into the lab and then we do the same types of experiments with climate pressures and global pressures on them. Some pioneer work that has emerged from that setup is, for instance, the work that we did on seaweed blue carbon and the effects of global climate pressures on uh, global carbon cycling. Meeting the big environmental challenges that are currently faced by our oceans is going to take a whole diversity of approaches. We need to combine knowledge, we need to develop conceptual understanding. The importance of creating a digital representation of the marine system that we can use to then understand the challenges it's faced will require a whole host of different data inputs both from observations, such as uh, from the Western Channel Observatory and Smart Sound, but also from experiments whereby we can dissect the processes which underpin those observations. To all of the marine researchers out there who are looking to explore aspects of climate change and human pressures on marine ecosystems, I'd really like to think that the PML Mesocosm offers a facility and an opportunity for them to come and conduct their research in a place that is a not only an amazing track record on delivering high quality, high impact research, but I think has a really exciting future. The Mesocosm is over 30 years old now, but it still remains relevant to modern research. It's flexible and it adapts and it responds to the demands that modern science puts towards it. I have every hope that the Mesocosm as a facility will continue doing that long into the future.